So um, I'm just having a look particularly today about the values and the impact of CPD. So I mean, this is going to be quite different from my session that I'm oh, running sorry. later on to the principles, but obviously there is some overlap. Um, evaluating the impact is probably one of the most common things I get asked about um, in, in the work that I do. Um, so my organisation is called the Teacher Development Trust. Uh, it's a charity, it's three years old, um, and we work on uh, trying to improve professional development around the country. Um, my background is as a teacher myself, and actually I was sort of inspired to set the charity up by just thinking, why do I do lots of CPD and why doesn't it have much impact? And why do I still have that box of notes under my desk from all the previous CPD I've done? But I sometimes have even forgotten I ever went on. So evaluating impact is something quite close to my heart. Um, and how do we actually know anything we do makes a difference? So, first of all, I want to think about the framework of what's the different impact we're looking for. And, and this is probably going to be, actually, this is the key part. Um, so we're going to be thinking about different levels. But can you just, can you give me any examples of professional development that you've tried to maybe find the impact of, or you've wanted to evaluate and actually have had an issue with doing? Has anyone got anything they'd like to share in terms of something you've tried to evaluate? I could be really honest, and I'm not sure I have. Okay. I don't think I've actually tried to evaluate the impact of the CPD. You know, yeah. it's, there's so many other things that take precedence. And I suppose indirectly, which is all about pupil attainment mm -hmm. and how they're making progress, I suppose it's there, okay. but it's more explicit. Okay, so this is more, for you it's a bit more exploratory really, mm -hmm. so what other ways that we could be doing it? You've got any thoughts on uh, Impact in, uh, sorry, evidence in the impact of coaching okay. in the school, uh, I, I found difficult. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about really small changes to yeah. performance in the classroom. Yeah, um, agreed. And actually putting a Measurement on that is it's difficult, isn't it? Yes, agreed. Uh, anyone else? I think I agree. It's like but when, when, the, when the professional development is about professional behaviours, you know, how, how do you measure changes in professional behaviours other than in, impression marking? Yes, agreed. Broadly speaking, the biggest issue we've got in school is we make a relatively small intervention with professional development. And it's one of probably a thousand things that are going on, at least for teachers. And then we're expecting to see MSU that work all the way through and suddenly make a change in a whole grade, which is the aggregate of what students do and don't know from hundreds and hundreds of hours of learning and interactions with peers. And somehow that small intervention is supposed to work its way through this big mass and make a big difference on this big averaged, av aggregated grade over here. And actually, when you think about it, it's almost going to be impossible, isn't it? I mean, realistically, we would like to be able to say, it would be very comforting to say, we did that course over there, grades went up. But realistically, a very small intervention, can the small amount of time a teacher spends, not likely to make that much that big a difference. So actually, it's a matter of thinking exactly what it is. Let's narrow down, let's think of exactly what we're, it is the impact we're looking for. So, I'm going to have a look at um, sort of five different levels here. Um, which I think we need to think about as we go through. Um, I would very happily make these slides available in, in Sendly if you want to, uh, so if, you don't, if you'd rather not make notes. Um, and I will either email them to the organiser Tim or alternatively I'll put them on the website. And if, I have, if it looks like I haven't done so, please just email me or tweet at me or something. Because um, I did mean to, but just didn't get around to it. Um, oh, I didn't mean that to happen. Um, okay, so awareness. Actually, no, let's go through the levels because we'll do them in detail. So awareness is the, as, the, as the most basic level, changing awareness. The next thing, beginning to change attitudes, beliefs, confidence, maybe the way people think about things. That's the next level. The next level down, that is beginning to embed things in the systems and the way people work. The next thing is around actually seeing practice changes. And then the deepest level of all is the outcomes for students. Okay? Now, arguably, you can put in all sorts of different levels. But as a, as a general way of thinking about it, this is quite a useful way to begin to think about the levels of impact we're trying to get. So awareness. Really good thing, we do lots and lots of things in schools that change awareness. Probably we try and do too many, actually. Um, but any information giving exercise, any briefing exercise, is about changing awareness. Um, so that could be, you know, staff briefing, it could be sending out a newsletter, it could be putting things in people's pigeonholes, it could be... Um, frankly, a lot of the twilight inset days and all those sorts of things where you know people are sat after school and they are receiving some information. 
realistically, what we're looking at there is changing awareness of something. Um, and even getting a group of teachers together and sharing good practice. Actually, realistically, what we're really changing is just awareness. So how do we actually begin to tell? How do we evaluate the impact of awareness of something? Because you do need to know, sometimes there will be briefings of things that are mission critical. Um, so how do we know? Well, I mean, we've got basic ideas here. Surveys, questionnaires, interviews. Now, call them happy sheets. Um, what I mean by that is the little evaluation form you get at the end of any professional development session. Did you like it? What did you learn? That sort of thing. Um, were you happy? Um, so you've got some very basic ideas. I think, fundamentally, we would expect a very short activity in all likelihood is not going to do much other than change awareness. Because in a very crowded day, in a very busy, busy work, actually a very small awareness changing is important. But, as teachers, of course, we do need to be aware of lots of different things, don't we? So, here is an example of something around awareness. This would be a briefing on assessment without labels. I would imagine most schools up and down the country have looked at that now. Um, and if someone stands up in a staff meeting, maybe at a twilight inset or something, so everybody's got together, a member of senior leadership team has learned about assessment without levels, and they maybe do a 20-minute briefing to everybody. Um, here's a couple of questions for you. What impact would you expect from it? Ooh. What impact would you ex Ooh. Gosh, this has a life of its own. What impact would you expect from it? And how would you assess that? The awareness change. Can I suggest we try and organise ourselves, just sit a little bit closer so you can have a conversation. Um, it's lots of lovely breeze coming through anyway, so God, it's not going to be an issue in this nice big class. Um, but shut themselves along and just have a chat about that for a moment. Um, and then let's just share this. Yeah, Senior leader is standing up and just 
getting 20 minutes on, okay, this is, the, this is what we're talking about, assessment time levels. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about what impact you'd expect from this? Because most people then immediately start thinking, how does this affect me? How does it affect me within my own subject? Because yeah. it's a whole school talk, yeah. you're immediately just thinking, okay, this is what we'll do. So it's kind of just applying it to your own practice. Okay, so that, I guess that the first thing you're then thinking is, you'd want everyone in the audience to begin to reflect with you. So actually one of the impacts you'd like is, you'd like to see some reflection going on. Um, how, how, would you, how might you know if that's going on? You could ask people maybe to do some kind of sugar paper, you know, exercise where they're just brainstorming their yes. ideas, yes. it notes, sticking them up. Exactly. So actually you could then give them a bit of time for that reflection activity and as they're doing that, you can gather evidence from that. So that'd be great. And you've identified, right, out of this I'd like people to begin reflecting, here's the exercise, here's the example of how they're doing that, I've got my evidence, there we go, and that's the impact we need to do. So that'd be great. Um, anything else you might expect in terms of um, in terms of this briefing. So one of the things is we'd like to see some reflection coming out of it. Anything else in terms of people's awareness and thinking and what they do? Do you have any other thoughts about what you might do or how you might evaluate it? You were having quite, you know, quite an, um, a conversation about tools you would use if you right. Yeah, we were just talking about survey monkey. We weren't really talking about that, to be absolutely honest. Um, we were talking about our highlights and looking at yeah. matching the right people to the right highlights mm -hmm. and making sure that um, we are, the twilights can be then tweaked if they're not matching our teachers' needs. Yes. Um, and we'll talk about survey we're looking at how to yep. use that. Survey can be a really good tool if, and this is honestly from personal opinion, if you get everyone to do it there and then. Because yeah. actually if everyone goes, then every other priority then raises its head. So actually you'll you'll then get, you know, the normal twenty percent or something will do it really keenly and everybody mm -hmm. else will kind of mean to do it and then you'll probably get thirty percent who just never actually get around to it. So of course that skews what happens, which is why some people get them to fill in the sheet, but then someone's got to enter it. So, but you know, things like that, absolutely, you can actually say at the end, you could ask a few basic questions. In terms of a briefing about this, 20 minute briefing, that specifically might be overkill, but I mean, that, the sort of questions, if they've done a few different briefings, you could ask questions at the end, couldn't you? And either open-ended, what did you think about, or to what extent did you feel this, or even more objective question that says, um, what do you know about this? And actually, almost a little mini assessment to just test their understanding on something. Um, different, different possibilities. Do you have any other thoughts about this particular activity? We find a point off. Um, we're just talking about um, CBD in general yep. and uh, what we're doing in each other's. Okay, all right. About, about going off and doing it. And okay. Doing that and okay. Saying, yeah. All right, well, so Checking let's. Ahead, let's well, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, so. Yeah, what you said about. So they make you do it then or not at all. Yes. On our CBD conferences, we always have an evaluation. No one can bring it. Yes, up. absolutely. And then we crunch the statistics and yes. build up bar charts to really Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, so when we run, uh, we do audits of school CPD, and, and I know we've done, done an audit, for example, and actually we always try and say to people, do it in the twilight, and then get everyone in the computer room there and then, fill it in, and then you get like, more people doing it. So. Because you can ask people to make a commitment as well, based on the session. Yes. So asking them, okay, what is the first thing you're going to do? Yes. And then you've got that to then revisit if it's going to be followed up at a later. Yeah, time. absolutely. And that gives you the opportunity to do more evaluation later. So by saying, I am going to, A, you've got evidence of thinking and reflection planning. And secondly, you can then come back later and re-evaluate. Because of course, the issue with anything about awareness is, thoughts in our brains compete with each other, don't they? I mean, as we know about learning, you don't just put a thought in the brain and it stays there. It sort of fades away over time, doesn't it? So actually, it's a matter of well, what can we do to make sure that that's still happened. Um, I think it's, it's all very well having this information, but most schools will have this secondary school. You might be giving the CPD to only first staff of 70. When everyone starts giving you feedback, you're going to get very, very, very different feedback from yes. one member of the staff to yes. the next. And then it's ensuring, isn't it, that what you do, just like you do with your own students, that you are applying, you are making the CPD relevant yes. for every single member of staff. Absolutely. Um, I think that's a challenge, isn't it, to be honest, um, if we have that role, uh, of making sure that what we deliver is relevant for every single member of staff, from that's right. to, that's right. to master it, to yeah. understand it almost. I mean, I mean sorry, sorry. Sorry. I was just saying we use Blue Sky to you know, kind of match it up to our CPD targets yeah, yeah. after everything we do like this.
seen all sorts of people, some people use Sing, some people are using Blue, uh, Blue Sky, Blue Wave, Swift, School IP, various different systems, some people are just using paper based systems, mm -hmm. Survey Monkey, all sorts of things which people are using just to gather the information. Um, okay. The next, the next level of CPD, then kind of the next level of impact we might be looking for is actually beginning to change the way that people generally think about things. So the sorts of CPD activities here is the sorts of thing where you say, I really need to re-motivate everybody, I need to get everyone pet back up, rethink about what's possible, open their minds a little bit, get them inspired. Actually, a bit of extra challenge in this kind of activity, which means you may have thought this is the way this thing works, but actually it's something different. So it's really, it's working at a slightly deeper level mentally, not just his a little extra fact for you. So, I mean, I've suggested some ideas there about, you know, the inspiration session that you people will put in their CPD session, um, actually some of the things, for example, Princess Teaching Institute sessions, taking someone out, actually really inspirational subject experts, for example, and getting them to really think about what's possible in their subject. Uh, motivational speakers coming into the school, someone will come and talk to you about things you didn't realise were possible before, will get, maybe give you some wonderful stories about what, they've, what has been achieved, um, and actually, it, it, uh, and even things like actually a senior leader trying to stand up and say, you know, we're all going to do something different. But even the, as a senior leader, you want people to believe in a new approach. And actually, you're a salesperson a lot as a senior leader. A lot of things you're doing is standing up and really selling ideas to people. And as I'll talk about later, that turns out how well you do that is absolutely key in terms of the impact that the CPD has. Um, Coaching. Coaching is a really interesting one. So actually with coaching, you're often not just making people aware of things, you're beginning to get, really make them rethink the way they see the world. And often it's that long, wonderful coaching question of asking why a few times, and actually making them go, gosh, wow, I'm just suddenly, you know, I've had a bit of a breakthrough. Um, uh, an example I found very interesting, I'm a, a governor at a uh, primary school which was um, in North London, which was requires improvement. They had a very, very low morale in the school, and they all suddenly felt a bit sort of downtrodden and head teacher quite wisely took it into the whole inset day, took them all down to a school which is very similar in another part of London, which is outstanding, although they don't care about the officer grading, and they really they do really exceptional things. And they all shadowed a teacher and they all came back and they buzzed and went, ah, we can be like that. That sort of thing. That's beginning to change confidence and awareness and so on. How do you evaluate that? Well again, you see this sort of thing, um, Actually, it's very hard, isn't it? Because that's really opening up into someone's head and beginning to see what's happening in e with each teacher. But in terms of proxies of things, you might make observations. So it might just be, and this doesn't have to be a lesson observation, it could just be regularly making observations of the mood in the staff room, regularly looking at the way people are using discussion areas, regularly looking at, I don't know, uh, looking at the staff library. Are people beginning to read certain books more? Are they beginning to engage with certain activities? Are staff engaging with social media more now? Are they talking about more things? You have to look at the sort of the proxies. What would if if we've changed their behaviour, their beliefs, and their thinking? What activities would we like to see more of? Um, so it could again be surveys and questionnaires. And the interesting with this one is, as once we've got to this level, you might want to do a before and after, might you? Because you might want to ask people beforehand, you know, what do you think is possible from students here, or how do you think this works? And it could be a survey. You could actually want to get someone to do a little maybe focus group or have a few individual discussions. And just, that's probably going to help you set the CPD up as well, isn't it? And actually, the more you've understood beforehand about how people think about things and their confidence levels, then actually further down the line, you can begin to then repeat that activity, either the same people or different ones. Um, diaries is a really interesting one. We sometimes do that with NQTs, don't we? Or, or students on, in ITT, and we ask them to keep a reflective diary. Increasingly, even though it's not a formal diary, schools are now asking, um, asking teachers to have a bit of a professional learning journal. And even though some people grumble about it a bit, it's actually saying, well, what have you learned and how have you learned it? And what does that mean in you as a learner? And what does it mean for your pupils? And using some evidence like that, again, you can be seeing, oh, look, you can see evidence they're thinking about things in a different way. Sometimes, to be honest, I think uh, people often don't think about this as an evaluation level. People often go straight to the data. But actually, that's a really important evaluation level, isn't it? And actually, if we build that into our thinking from the very beginning, that can be really powerful. As an example of that, an inspirational keynote to raise expectations of what's possible in English. So again, that could be something in any school in the country, and you get someone to come in and talk to your school or a group of schools mm -hmm. and, and do that activity. 
Um, so what impact would you be looking for? Why would you have chosen to do that? Because people do do that, don't they? They bring in the big speaker, and that's a perfectly reasonable activity to do, but people don't often explicitly think, well, what, what impact am I exactly looking for? So do you also just want to, and feel, again, I know people's discussions go off, but um, what activity do you think, if you designed that to happen with your colleagues, exactly what would you be looking for? And then how might you know if it did happen? Just have a couple of discussions. I think we could have a breakout session. Yeah. 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 I, I have, and, and I think it's so important to apply, immediately apply, what you're the first thing to do. Book a computer room, care about, and then let's plan it as a user yeah. strategy yeah. that you've just yeah. heard about. And then you've got some new concrete to work away, and you know at least one lesson is going to be done. We have a team that is very interesting. We tend to get that. It's amazing. Beautiful decisions. Just say to come and talk about how we can together go into the head. We haven't had time to say climate change at this time of day. So the green is you have a real picture. Then we have to change the system now. Okay, um, to bring together a, a, few, a few sort of threads, um, having promised me you're now on task, so uh, <laughs> what, sort of, uh, what sort of things might you be looking for, how might you evaluate it? Uh, well, first of all, we said, uh, you know, like morning walks and you do a chance to shine, so you yeah. people mm -hmm. into the classroom to show them what you're doing mm -hmm. and how it's working, and then we are trying to um, make it a bit more specific what would we actually looking for on those morning walks or mm -hmm. the chance to shine. Yeah. And then we looked at, we, we, you know, if you have a speaker coming in, then you could reflect mm -hmm. about what they said and how that, that, that would, how you can associate or put that to with your school. Yeah. And yeah. then how you might then implement some of those um, um, uh, tasks or ideas yes. within your Absolutely. school. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you could evaluate that at another yes. session. Like yes, that. agreed. Uh, can I ask a, maybe a slightly challenging question then to go around those two points? Um, how might you know, if you're going and watching what people are doing as a result of this, how would you know if they're, changed, they're thinking genuinely changed and now they're doing it, or if they really just want to get you off their back and then they're doing it just to show you? There has, there has to be some form of structure, doesn't there? Like at the departmental level, where maybe um, the head of departments has taken control mm -hmm. and they've encouraged the department to change units of learning, for example, mm -hmm. or amend mm -hmm. units of learning. Um, I think also in terms of teaching, you probably see the teachers taking more of a risk mm -hmm. as well, trying out different ideas and new things with their students. Um, and then you'd obviously be looking at progress of the students and the learning that was taking place in the classroom. But I think to have a true picture, you have to know what was going on beforehand, wouldn't you, in yeah. those particular lessons yeah. in order to be able to... And if someone's inspired you, you're going to want to share it. I mean, you've mm -hmm. got to make opportunities then to say, you know, this is what I've seen. Right. Um, you might even re-evaluate it sometime later. So you might evaluate with the most well, I can't even say the word today, it's Friday. Uh, the speakers, you know, and the work, you know, what you've implemented. 
20, and then you might go and then evaluate mm. it six months later, yes. you know, at the end of term, and yes. see if it has had some impact. Yes. Now, you're quite rightly picked up on, uh, so I think some, some of those ideas are definitely beginning, they're definitely on the edge of actually really digging into what people are thinking, aren't they? Because I think it's one of the big issues. Often we mistake people changing what they do for having really changed their thinking. And actually it's sort of almost a bit of a play in schools, isn't it? People that I, I just did it, like, I'm going to try and fool myself into thinking I really believed it, but I just did it. Um, and actually, whereas you, you know, you're talking about ideas like, well, actually, see if they're beginning to share it, you know? Well, what happens in their spare time? Are they beginning to come up with ideas? Is there a buzz around it? Are we actually, when you take the pressure off, are they actually taking risks to try this out? I think people are scared, aren't they, of taking yeah. this in case, oh god, what if it goes wrong, yeah. or what happens? Yeah. But I think, just to put it speaking, I've had to take a risk in the role that I'm doing at the moment, and although I'm teaching, but it's still a change of my thinking mm -hmm. to be able to move something forward. Yes. So, and it is a bit like out of yeah. the comfort zone. Yeah, but absolutely. if you're all doing it together as a as a collaborative teamwork, yeah. then it should be successful as part of the team. Yeah. Just to reevaluate and move things around yeah. as a fit. Absolutely. I think as well you need to make sure that it becomes embedded. Mm -hmm. um, because all too often you have a motivational speaker that comes in yeah. and it becomes a hot topic for I don't know, a couple of weeks. And then you move on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Which actually is you going to take me on beautifully to my next slide, actually about the systems bit. But I guess I don't, I don't, don't ever lose sight of that because I think sometimes in school we sometimes jump so quickly to what teachers are doing and what the systems are, we don't actually check if we really get buy-in. And actually, I think. There's a lot of faking it, isn't there? There's a lot of kind of young women to do it. No, do you? we just need to talk to the kids. A student voice. Um, it, I know it depends on the culture of your school, but we've got a very strong student voice body at our store called yeah. Make Money Better. Yeah. And they used to be our teachers. Um, we're actually the head teacher, not our students, but our staff. Um, they do lesson observations. Um, we invite them to come in every week to talk to us. Yeah. And they will tell you what's going on. They will tell you if something's in there or not, whether yeah. something's changed, Absolutely. And what's the matter. And at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. We're not here for our own egos, we're here for our kids. Yeah, completely so agree. Awesome. Completely agree. Again, there's on one side that might pick up someone really excitedly trying something new. On the other side of things, what you might possibly get is it is uh, it's the risk side of that is people going, if you know someone could always check up on me by asking the kids, I'm always going to make sure I do this. I mean, to be honest, make, I'll make a big admission. I used to write my targets on the board despite thinking it was a total waste of everybody's time. And actually, my, some of my readings did suggest maybe it was. But I just did it. I never believed it. And actually, though, senior leaders would have wandered around and they'd have seen me doing that and go, great, it's embedded. It wasn't remotely embedded. It, I genuinely was that I just did it to try and get one else off my back. And how do you tell the difference between doing it and really thinking about it? But then you're right, what's the opportunity then of saying, people are really enthusiastic about it, but they didn't get embedded at all. So it's about in checking on both those levels, isn't it? It's actually, this is probably one of the hardest levels to check against. I, well, I, 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 I certainly do not snoop, but I used to find the quality of informal suffering conversations was a strong indicator yeah. of where staff were. Because uh, if, if no one was looking and, and no one was monitoring what, what they're saying there, yeah. that matters. And that's a really strong reflection of the, you know, the culture in, in, yes. in the school. So you know, when we're in conversation in the staff room shifts from saying, well, I've had that all for class yes. nine again today, and everybody agrees, a shift to say, I've had this exciting experience, but I want to make it better. And yes. who's got an idea about how it can be when you hear yes. that kind of conversation? Absolutely. Then, then you know you've got some purchase. Absolutely. And in fact, dialogue is a really good way of identifying depth, isn't it? Mm. Because actually, for example, if we're doing a lesson observation, the dialogue you can have with the teacher about why did you and how mm. did you and what do you think about immediately. I mean, to be honest, I could have been rumbled very quickly. So why did you choose those, you know, those those things? Uh, why did you choose to do those? Now at that point then the senior leader could either say well, we need to try and make him comply more or they said well actually he just doesn't believe it, let's do more to try and make him work buy into it. But dialogue can be really important, can't it? Quality of dialogue, getting teachers to have peer dialogue and record it and present it to you, um, actually just engaging in a very open dialogue with staff as well. 
looking at systems, for example, and saying, okay, going into the department and saying, okay, I can see that's a new scheme of work. Talk me through what was the thinking here and why did this happen? And well, you're all now talking about making staff accountable, aren't you? Because there's a difference between um, having that lovely informal conversation in the department where staff yeah. may or may not yeah. really yeah. Uh, share things with you or with each other. Um, but it's another thing, isn't it, where you actually need to see evidence. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I, I guess I would argue that you need to see evidence for taking place and the staff genuinely believe in it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's beginning to think of those two because if it's not happening, as a senior leader, you need to know they're just not doing it because I need to put a bit more pressure on. They actually mm -hmm. know they should and they believe in it, but they just aren't doing it yet. Sometimes you put a bit extra pressure on them. And sometimes you go, God, I just don't believe this is right at all. I haven't done the right sales job, but this helps you figure it out. Mm -hmm. Let's let's move on because we've got a few few more to have a look at. Systems is this embedded embeddedness, embeddedness in the way of life. So it's not necessarily looking at what a teacher is doing, but it's looking at policies, looking at systems, and actually, again, we don't often think about in terms of CPD and training how would we see it embedded in systems. But actually, already in this room, we've come up with loads of ideas about that. Um, so we often do briefing sessions in CPD about lots of these different things. Um, changing curriculum, you know, we're about to make changes to the financial systems or the behaviour systems, or we're changing the timetable, and actually I need to brief you about that. Um, that's one set, and actually we've already come up with, um, with other things about, actually we're going to do a whole, for example, briefing, or a whole series of bits of training about behaviour, and now we want to see has that worked it through in the way that each department thinks about behaviour. Let's look at each department's approach to behaviour, let's look at the records of what's happening, let's look at people's uses of behaviour systems, those sorts of things. So, are things embedded or not? This is another important level to think about. And again, it's something you really need to think about before you even begin, don't you? We need to begin to say, okay, well, if this is successful, what will we see? So, um, there's sampling. Um, so, sampling as in grabbing a couple of random, uh, you know, random examples of behaviour reports that are put on the system, or the way that people are now submitting requests for financial, you know, for purchase orders. Um, it could be that before and after you look at the number of behaviour incidents you've got that are being recorded, you know, sticking with the behaviour theme. Uh, benchmarking is an interesting one because with systems, it's very hard to compare yourself against anything. And you might think your system's great. So sometimes it's where you need a bit of externality and say, actually, are our systems any good? We think they're quite good, but are they? Getting someone from outside to be into good benchmark you against other, other schools. Um, a classic one of that is, um, as a senior leadership team, you think you're spending not very much money on X. And actually, when it, you, you then benchmark yourself against other schools, you go, well, actually, we're spending quite a lot. That's nice. You know, we might still want to spend more, but it's useful to know. Um, observations of systems. So, you know, popping into staff rooms and actually just kind of, not in a, I am monitoring and holding you accountable sort of way, but just beginning to sample, actually, are people generally using the system? You know, I never see anyone in science putting a behaviour report in, actually just wandering around, and like, somehow in that department, no one's got the Sims behaviour screen up on their screen. I wonder why that is okay. But begin to evaluate that. Um, interviews, having a, a more in-depth coaching conversation with someone and getting them to explain to you why they use things, why they don't use things, etc. Um, so, training program with the introduction of the new behaviour reporting system. So this might, you know, classic one is right. We've been using Sims for years, but we've never used the behaviour system. So actually, we're all going to start doing that. Here's how it works. Here's the training. Everyone's had the opportunity to see all the steps and, and try it out. Um, what impact would you be looking for in terms of the systems across the school? We've given a couple of examples already, but just have, have a, we'll have to make this a shorter conversation because we're, time is zooming forward quite quickly. Have just a quick chat about what you might expect to see at the systems level and what tests you would use in your school. Okay. And that is the only thing we record. So, if you go for all the tensions, 
we don't have to process it. So it's just the absolute mistake. It's just the yeah, and then yeah. 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 I, I, I was used to being a yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. 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 um, Sorry, um, just <laughs> we've only got ten minutes left, so I have to keep that relatively curtailed. Um, just really quickly, then, things. What might you observe if the systems are working? If it's if an idea has become systematized, what might you see? Just sort of fire. Yeah, so you might see improved behaviour, uh, which is, I, I guess, yes, that might be more on the outcome side rather than the use of the systems. Or in terms of use of the systems. Consistency. Yeah, people are using it. I yeah, think. using it. Actually, yeah. are people beginning to use it equally? I think you have a conversation about on-call type systems mm -hmm. and, you know, are people using it actually? Yeah. Monitoring, are, you know, are departments using it in a reasonably similar sort of way? We're also talking about the balance between recording, recording, recording. Actually, yeah, absolutely. Again, too, don't be too heavy on this and the recording, because otherwise everyone's like, well, I'll try and deal with this child, but I've got to record it first, you know, <laughs> and that's a classic. But again, relatively quick fire. Any thoughts about, is it systematic yet? And we just talking about consistency, making sure that everybody yeah. is using it. Yeah, that's right. And actually, consistently, particularly the more disadvantaged the school is, the more important consistency yeah. is for children as well. Yeah. And actually, you know, it's particularly important, isn't it? You know, if you're in a really difficult area where they come from more chaotic homes, that becomes more important. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other thoughts about? I'm using the same language because I think schools love acronyms, don't they? One yeah. acronym means something different from one school to another. That's a really so good just one. Just making sure that people are using the same language. Yeah, that's a really good one. I really like that. If the system's embedded, everyone will start talking about it in the same way and you can just share common language. I really like that one, yes. Um, practices, what the teacher is actually doing, I'm completely thinking in the classroom, obviously this could be non-teachers as well, but, so if someone says, right, we've got this new approach to doing behaviour, um, or I want to get everyone to use a certain teaching technique, and, or, uh, you know, actually we're, uh, I want all middle leaders to start using a slightly different approach for leadership, but this is something specifically aimed at changing practices, okay? Now I also just want to put a big health warning on this one because, um, the biggest issue we see in schools is changing practice and people think outcomes have then improved and they actually haven't. Mm -hmm. So actually I always, almost always in fact would combine this with the next level down of outcomes and you should always know what outcomes should change to, but we'll come on to that. But this is a classic one of, you know, uh, we've already talked about uh, lesson, uh, lesson walks, you know, uh, walking around, having a look and uh, do we see examples of that happening? Um, when I'm just asking teachers quick reflection, are you using this or not, in interviews with people, benchmarking from outside, people asking to uh, begin to do multiple observations and benchmarking against other schools, um, student surveys, this is great isn't it, I mean to be honest it's the easiest way to find your staff are really doing something is ask students. Um, staff surveys, do you think you're doing it, lesson plans is really interesting and again without, and this is big, big danger one, big red flag on that one that you can't then ask everyone to always put in lesson plans but of course when they do, and if you just say occasionally, would you mind doing me a lesson plan for this one, just so I can explore your thinking? Did they do it? You know, is, is that is that a feature in there or not? And then actually, you know, if you talk about if you're talking that if they are using that, you would then look at the outputs from that as well. So if you are using this particular technique, we should see uh, we should see this in books, we should see this in lesson plans, we should see. But all those sorts of things. I'm going to zoom on a bit straight to the outcomes, if that's all right. And then this, and for me, this is where. Most, a much more CPD should be based at this level. Explicitly trying to improve specific outcomes for specific students, and I'll talk about this a lot more in my, in my uh, sort of lunchtime keynote thing. Um, pupil premium interventions is a perfect one. This is such a big change in the system where suddenly a specific pot of money for specific students, and you have to identify specific outcomes. I actually think it's been really good for us as, a, as an education system. Um, we have a cohort, you know, year something, there's a behaviour issue, or certain, um, you know, EAL children are having issues, or, um, you know, girl, this group of girls are too quiet, or that sort of thing. Um, most professional development for changing teaching should have a focus on which students should benefit and how. In what way? Um, actually, it could be anything around, you know, uh, career guidance for teachers, and actually saying, you know, what, what outcomes would we expect further down the line. Now, we think we're quite good at outcomes, but broadly speaking, as I said at the beginning, we tend to do really, really broad outcomes. And this is the problem here, because actually a briefing or a small change is very, very hard to evaluate if, you know, 5A star C 
increases or something like that. And for me, the first thing we should be getting down to is, yes, exam data, but let's say, you know, if the physics teachers are all going to do some CPD, they actually say, well, which topic? And then we're going to go and look at exam data from last year and look at the questions related to that topic. Because actually the pedagogy of that topic might be different from that topic. As an ex-physics teacher, you know, teaching renewable energy, etc. is quite a different way of doing it to teaching electricity. You're using quite different techniques. So actually, we need to then evaluate at that level. Um, you can certainly use teacher expert judgment or getting a, a, you know, your, an advisor coming in from someone else and beginning to look at much narrower areas. Um, here's an interesting one we don't often use, destination data. You know, if the physics teachers are beginning to do their job better, actually, are we seeing more people going on to do physics? And again, some people do that, but we don't always do that. Um, are more children from our university going on to do different things? You know, do we, can we monitor that destination data? Um, and in terms of outcomes, then actually we also, this is not so much an evaluation as you get these huge big controlled trials, randomised controlled trials, where you try an idea out on two different groups and you compare the differences one after randomising them and so on. So a classic one here is, we need to improve reading. Okay, and again, I'm really sorry we can't have a discussion because we've all had too much enjoyable discussion so far, so we've had too many good ideas. So. Um, but the sorts of things we might be looking for, you know, and actually explicitly saying, if this is improving then, not just we'd hope to see the reading age improve, but we might see more, people, more books being taken out of the library. We might see greater engagement levels. We might see less off-task behaviour. We might see, when talking to children, we might hear different things about the way they talk about reading. Um, the evaluation would be quite different. And for anyone engaged in that CPD, it would be brilliant if they're thinking about that before they begin, isn't it? Like, uh, 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 before they begin, they think, what change might I see as I go through and learn about this? So, bear in mind there's a problem with a lot of evaluation. Anything we evaluate, um, we really like anecdotes. Anecdotes and stories weigh much higher in our minds than evidence, than sort of, than sort of I might call it more robust evidence, and slightly more objective evidence. So, if we hear a really good story, we, we actually mentally have a tendency to fit things to that nice story. Um, if we're expecting something to happen, or if we're feeling optimistic, we're more likely to see what we hope to see. This is a problem with, you know, like, if doing teacher observation, whatever you think about that teacher, you're likely to look for evidence of that to confirm what you think already. You don't look for, I'd like to find out reasons why I'm wrong, generally. Um, correlations between things. You see, teacher X did this at this point, and this at this point, it was higher. And you go, wow, it, that teacher was improving. And actually, of course, they could be two completely random points on a general downward trend. But we, we like spotting patterns. You know, it's the reason why everybody kind of thinks, oh, I spot patterns in the lottery, or I spot patterns in all sorts of things. Um, we see things where A changes and B changes, and we assume that's because of A. And actually, it's a classic one where we did CPD on behaviour, behaviour improved. How can you possibly tell it was, you know, they also did a million other things in school, how can you possibly tell it was that? The IKEA effects, I, love, I wanted to put it in because it's just brilliant. If we build something, we value it more. So actually, if you've built an IKEA unit, you value it more than if someone gives you that IKEA unit pre-made. And that's true of, if we're evaluating any program we've tried to implement, we're more likely to want it to be positive. So as an SLT, if we said, we all tried to do this, did it work? You really cannot help yourself but look for things to confirm what you're looking for, because of the IKEA effect. Um, and then there are loads of things which actually, well, there might be loads of other confounding issues, as in the things which are actually making this a completely invalid evaluation. You know, there might be loads of other things happen, people came in from outside, we had some big incident, or um, actually there's some other member of staff have been quietly briefing people to do something different. And, you know, we just, we can't get past that. So the tough truth in schools, actually, is that it's much harder to evaluate anything than we really think it is. And this is one of those really, really tough things that sometimes you have to go particularly to governors and say, you'd like to know if it works, well, it's impossible, I'm sorry, it's impossible to know that. Um, we want lots of certainty. Now, as an example of that, and I think these are two shockers that everybody should probably know. Um, so the chair of Ofqual pointed this out recently and said, we are, we are internationally leading in terms of standards of reliability of our GCCs, but because of the number of exams we actually have, then we realistically, if someone gets a grade B from AQA or from Edexcel, it could actually be an A or a C. 
in, in 90% of cases. So broadly speaking, we can't assume any grade is actually that grade, it's that plus or minus one. And in fact, for sort of 10% of students, it could be plus or minus two. But we all go, oh yeah, it's B. No, and of course it's been validated externally. But actually, they wouldn't even remotely pretend that. So if that's the case of all the systems they've got in place in Ofqual, imagine the assessments we do internally. And imagine those assessments actually, plus or minus one at the very least, and yet we make life or death decisions for children, don't we? About, about what they do. And also, of course, as we, we actually turns out we're very, very bad at marking against a set of criteria. We hugely all overestimate how good we are at doing it. And um, everyone thinks they're very good at it, but actually, whenever you look at it mathematically and test it, you're far less reliable than we think. And actually, when you're marking kids against a set of criteria, what you already know about them and your view towards them is enormously impactful. Enormously impactful. But if you ask everyone, says, of course I know what good is, I know what an A is, I know what a C is. But it's something we have to struggle with. It's not that we should never do it, but we should never assume we've got it right. Similarly, and I'm so pleased that lesson grading is gradually disappearing from our system, it's simply not possible, even with multiple observations, to assume if a teacher is good, they're actually good. And that's something that um, some head teachers have actually found quite challenging, because they go, of course I know what a good lesson looks like. And say, I can absolutely guarantee you don't. That you know what you think, and actually you're bringing all sorts of baggage with you. And actually, if you, at any point we can show you quite easily statistically, you think it's that, it's actually going to be this or this. And even the most reliable studies done in the US with about five observations independently from different people, been trained, watching videos, um, they only ever got to 66% reliability maximum once they also folded another data. That's a low reliability for teacher observation. Okay, We're much, much less reliable than we think we are. So we. It's fine, that doesn't mean we shouldn't observe, but just we shouldn't hand huge amounts of weight on the outcome. So actually, evaluating the impacts of CPD. A, it's quite hard, isn't it? B, we need to think about different levels. C, whatever we come out with, don't assume that's the answer. It's just another piece of evidence along the way. Actually, it turns out that getting people involved in evaluation is more important than the evaluation itself in many ways. Actually, just by thinking about what you're trying to achieve, makes it more likely you'll achieve it. By thinking about how you'll measure it along the way, makes it more likely you will get success, because you're all focused and looking for impact the whole time. But what you can't do is say, it worked, it didn't work at the end. Say, well, it looked like it probably did, but we can't be sure. Um, just as a, as a, and I'll pull this out a bit more later, because we really have got to the end, but the research which I'll be talking about later, the Developing Great Teaching Report, actually noted that in CPD, there's a really important element that's different between CPD that has impacts and CPD that doesn't. And that is formative assessment. So if you get participants to identify what should change if my learning is successful for my students. So they need to think, um, which particular students am I going to see an impact on? What outcomes am I going to see change? Um, and constantly through the learning process, through each time they think about it and try out an idea, have I made a difference yet? What am I going to see? It turns out to be incredibly important to identify which specific outcomes for who, and also begin to think more narrowly rather than, you know, this big outcome, quality of teaching will improve, but this element will improve. And so, here's some key ideas. If at the beginning of all CPD you actually say, okay, if I'm successful, could you just think for a minute about what you think will change? What will change in your schools if I've been successful? What will change with your classrooms if I've been successful? Think about a student. Think about how that person might change. I think Philip accordingly was doing a bit of this earlier on. She would begin to say, think of a case pupil or an exemplar pupil and imagine how that person will change. And that helps you. Also, anyone who's facilitating CPD, what's going to change in the heads of the teachers, if you're successfully running this, how will you know? That's really important. Get everybody to think, okay, what does success look like? Not just, I'm going to brief you on some ideas. If you get the participants to think about where they're going, how they're getting there, it's assessment for learning, isn't it? It's exactly what Dylan Williams always told us is great teaching. The more people think about that, the better. Um, so formative assessment turns out to be incredibly important, getting participants to evaluate whether they've made a difference yet, it makes it far more likely they will make a difference. And it also improves their formative assessment skills, which is nice. So, um, you can find out a bit more about this. We've got some more blogs and things about evaluation, and we'll be adding more. Um, we've got, 
our national database, which if you're interested, it's kind of our trip advisor for CPD, and we're trying to get people to evaluate that against, did it make a difference in your practice, how do you know, did it make a difference to your outcomes, how do you know. We've got lots of listings on there, and that's free to use. Um, and then finally, our network, and actually we're now up to over 130 schools across the country where we, we're exploring this. In fact, we did a big workshop last year, a whole day of evaluating the impact of CPD and people were sharing plans and ideas. So, it's a membership network, it does cost something to join, but if you'd like to, obviously, we'd love to have you. All the other suppliers exist as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.